let's do some fun physics stuff. So I want to do vector sum of forces, and I want to I want to show you how to do this for this problem of block on an inclined plane. And then we're going to do it in Python too, so I can show you the power of using Python as a calculator, especially as a vector calculator. So Python's your friend, Python is good, but if you want to use something else, I'm cool with that too. If you don't want to use it, that's cool. Okay. So here's a block, mass m. Uh, the angle of this is 49 degrees, and there's my gravitational field. Uh, the vector is 0, negative 9.8, 0 newtons per kilogram. So let's start off with the forces acting on the block. And let's draw a force diagram. So I'm going to draw a dot, right, to, to represent where I'm going to start all my forces from. And then I'm going to say I have uh, the downward gravitational force. Uh, let's just call that Fg. And then what other forces are acting on it? Well, Oh, you know what? I need friction too. We're gonna this. I want this to be at rest. I want this to be a equals zero 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 meters per second squared equals the zero vector. Because I, I want to do a equilibrium situation. So I'm gonna have that, and then I have the 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 plane pushes up perpendicular to the plane. We we'll call that the normal force, and that will be this in, and then I have the friction force going up the plane like this. F friction, let's call it. Uh, and let's say that um, this is right at the point where it's about to tip down the slide such that uh, this is the maximum friction force. So I can say the maximum frictional force, the magnitude, is equal to some coefficient of static friction times the magnitude of the normal force. Okay. Now I want to add up all these forces. I've kind of got my, I, I'm going to, that's fine. I can do it this way. Okay, so I was thinking, let's, let's, if this is with an acceleration of zero, then I can say this, F net equals zero, right? The net force is equal to zero. And just to be clear, this is the zero vector. Since I have a vector on the left-hand side, I have to have a vector on the right-hand side. And the, ve the zero vector is, zero 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 it has three components it's different than just zero so the next thing i need to do is to pick my x and y axis and and i we're going to do it like this that's my x direction that's my y direction okay so if that's the case then this is the angle theta you can do a little geometry there and so um i want to write this in two dimensions i want to say f net x is equal to zero, f net y is equal to zero. If it has a zero net force and the total net force is zero, then the x net force is zero and the y net force is zero. And the z too, but I don't really care about the z. Okay, so in the x direction, what force do I have? Well, I have the friction force in the negative x direction, f, f, right? It's in the negative x direction, all of it. That is a component, but it's in the negative x direction. And then I have a component of the gravitational force. So I'm dealing with this right here, which is the opposite side of that triangle. This side is mg, so that's going to be mg sine theta. So I'm going to say plus mg sine theta equals zero. And, and that's true. Now if I do the same thing for the y direction, I have uh, the normal forces in the y direction, and then a part of the gravitational force minus mg cosine theta because now I'm dealing with the adjacent side. Now there is one other thing. I can go over here and I can solve for the frictional force and plug this in uh, up here. Or I could solve for the normal force. Actually, let's do that. Uh, let's solve this. Let's say N equals mg cosine theta. That's the magnitude. If I put that in up here, I get the friction force is mu s mg cosine theta and then if I go down here, I can put that in and I get zero equals negative mu s mg cosine theta plus mg sine theta equals zero. And I could solve for theta or whatever I want. Well, let's just plot this. Let, let's do this. Let's pick a value for the gravitational force. Let's pick a value for the frictional force, and then we'll solve for the normal force. So I'm going to write it like this. 
Um, now the only problem is I have to have this is some angle theta. So I need, I need an expression for the friction force. Let's write this, F friction equals some constant F friction times the vector. I, my X component is gonna be co negative cosine theta. My Y component is gonna be sine theta zero. And then my gravitational force Fg is uh, m times g, and g is my vector up there. So now if I say f net, and this is what I really want to do, f net equals zero equals f friction plus fg plus n. So I can solve this for n and I get n equals negative f friction minus fg. And so that negative sign right there, all I have to do is multiply each component by a negative sign. So I wanna do this in Python. Um, I don't even need to know the coefficient of friction because I already picked some, I do need to pick a value for this. So let's pick a frictional value. Um, I guess it'd have to be equal to, um, this frictional value would have to be equal to the, the component of the gravitational force if it's not sliding. So this would be equal to uh, mg sine theta times negative cosine theta sine theta zero. Okay, so let's do this in Python. I'm gonna show you how to do vector calculations in Python and display these even. It's gonna be great. Trust me. Okay, so here we are. I'm using, this is GlowScript v Python. So this is a site, uh, trinket.io, uh, and I'll include a link to this code in the, down below. And um, you can edit it without even logging in. That's what's so great about it. So this is, let me show you this. A equals vector, one, two, three. Print. A. So I define the vector, the value A as a vector one, two, three, and then Python treats it as a vector. Okay, so I can even do uh, vector B, B equals vector uh, zero, two, uh, three, one, negative one. Now I can print A plus B, and it will add them. Let's just check and see what that should be. It should be, the X component should be one plus zero, which is one, two plus three, which is five, three plus negative one, which is two. And there you go, so it's working. Okay, so let's write down everything we know so far. I know G equals vector zero, negative 9.8, zero. M equals, uh, what did I say it was, 2.5. Uh, theta, I'm gonna need that. Theta is equal to, I said 49 degrees, so I'm gonna say 49 times pi divided by 180. So Python, this version of Python assumes all your values, all your angles when you take sines and cosines are in uh, radians. So by multiplying by pi divided by 180, I've converted that to radians. Okay, so let's start with the, my vectors. Fg equals, uh, I'm just gonna watch this, m times g. So, and let's print that. So G is a vector, M is a scalar, and Python can do that. Python can take that mass and multiply it by the X component, the Y component, and Z component, and make it a new vector. And there you go. It doesn't do the units. Don't put the units in there because the units are gonna make things messed up. But if I take 2.5 times negative 9.8, I get 24.5. And so there's my new, that's my weight. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Okay, now I did say what the frictional force was. I said F, F equals, uh, and I, I'm writing it down here, M times, okay, now here I do have to say MG is the magnitude of G, okay? So I already took in the magnet, it wasn't the vector G. But MG sine theta is the Y, is the, mm, let's just do it this way. So M times, I'm gonna do a little trick, let's just do this, print mag g that returns the magnitude of that vector g so if i do that i get just 9.8 so that's my my g with that not being a vector 
So I'm going to say FF equals M times mag G times sine of theta times the vector. Now I need to, I'm just writing out what I wrote in the paper. So I have negative, negative cosine of theta, sine of theta, zero. And let's print that out. Print, let's print FG equals FG Newtons and print FF equals FF Newtons. So there's my, my G and there's my friction force. And you notice they do not add up to zero. This is, if those are my only two forces, this is not in equilibrium. I can print that. Let's just print FG plus FF. So this means that the, the normal force has to be the opposite of that, right? So let's just go ahead and solve for that. N equals, and just like I said, minus FG, minus F, minus, minus FF. And then print that one, N equals N. And so this N, I'm using N as the normal force. And there are my three vectors. Okay, now we're gonna do something awesome. We're going, and let's do this one more thing. Let's, let's add them all up. So let's say print FG plus FF plus N, N. That would be the sum of the forces and we get zero as expected. Okay, but now let's display these. That's the cool part. We can actually display them. So I'm going to make in Python, I can do this. Uh, let's call it um, FB, FBD, FBD equals sphere. So it, sphere is a built-in function in Python and when I call it, it actually makes a three-dimensional sphere. Watch this. There's my three-dimensional sphere. And I can actually uh, right-click and rotate this around. I can zoom in and out. Okay, so I'm going to make that as my dot. And then I'm going to have my, um, my arrows come from that. So there's some other parameters in here that I need. I can say, the, the, what's the vector location of the center of that sphere? And I'm going to say it's at the origin, just for simplicity. I can also give it a radius. And I'm just thinking ahead here. If my, my forces are on the order of... 12, 13 meters, with that's how it look, right? I'm drawing an arrow 12, 13 units long, then maybe my radius should be one meter. So let's just try that. Radius equals one. And I could give it a color if I want to, but I'm not going to. And I could run that, it won't look any different um, because it zoomed out. Okay, now let's make an arrow. So let's call this FG arrow equals an object of type arrow. In Python, an arrow has a couple of really important attributes. Number one, it has a position, which is the location of the start of that arrow, and then axis is a vector from that start to the finish. So let me just make this and show you what I mean. So I want this to start at FBD. So I'm gonna say the position is FBD.POS. And then the axis is going to be equal to FG, right? The axis is gonna be the vector of the force. Um, let's give it a color too. I'm gonna to make this uh, green. So color equals color dot green. I think you can give it a label too, but I'm not, I don't remember how to do that. And there's my arrow. There, see that this is in three dimensions, right? So there's my gravitational force arrow. There's my dot. I'm gonna make that a little bit bigger. Let's make that radius 1.8. Let's just try that. That's good. Oh, perfect. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the other two forces. So now I'm gonna do uh, FF. So FF arrow, you can give this name whatever you want, but the type of object is arrow. The position again is gonna be at the free body diagram position. The axis is gonna be FF. Now in some cases you may have to scale this down because really we're drawing these in space. These are in meters and I'm, I'm, I'm using a Newton force vector, right? So as long as you're okay with that scale, uh, this is, it's actually drawing it as 12 meters by 13 meters in the x and the y direction. So uh, that's, just, that's just fine. That's the frictional force, and I think friction's red. Yeah, so let's say color equals color dot red, and then let's run that one. 
There you go. Uh, now, one of the things that may bother you, uh, the, the, the width of the arrow depends on the length. So this isn't the same, this is skinnier than that one. I'm okay with that. Uh, if you're not okay with that, you can change that, but let's just leave it. And then finally, let's say in arrow equals arrow, position equals fbd.pos, axis equals in, color equals color dot cyan. There you go. And so those forces all add up to zero. Let me show you that they add up to zero. So I, I'm going to um, start right here, go down, and then I'm going to move this arrow, uh, the end to, to the end of that arrow, and then like that, and then this one to the end of that, and show that they make a triangle. That'd be fun, don't you think? So that means that um, my F, let's do this one first. F, this arrow is not going to be at the free body diagram, it's going to be actually, this position is going to be the end of the green arrow, which is uh, FG. Let's just run that and show you what that does. So see now I put the position down here, which is the end of that place. Now I'm just going to put, I need to put this one down here, which is actually FG plus N. So let's see. FF, that one, this one's going to be right here. FG plus N, I think. There. And so you see that all those vectors add up to zero. So, I mean, this isn't really useful to draw these um, in a calculation because, um, but, it, but it might help you visually see what's going on. The, the vector operations, I think, can be super useful. Uh, we'll do some more of them later, but I just want to give you a little introduction to that. And I'm going to save this. Let's call this FBD practice, and the link will be down below.